Josh. In our locker room, we'll have his jersey up there with Wade LeBlanc and Joe Lawrence's. So, special day. So proud of you. And, and that's the state championship jersey he actually wore. So that's pretty neat. Hey, Coach, you're making me emotional over here. <laughs> yeah, first off, I just want to thank Coach. I mean, I appreciate it for everything he's done for me and to get me to where I'm at. Thank you a lot. I appreciate it. Secondly, first, I mean, secondly, I'm honored to speak here in front of you guys. Just to be invited to come out here and be your guest speaker is just a great privilege, and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. There's been many great guys and many great players from Bar to play. And I've been fortunate enough in my career to play with many great players as well. And I've been truly blessed with many physical gifts. And I'm very, very thankful for that. But sometimes in life, in this game, those gifts just aren't enough. <coughs> Every person that has reached the pinnacle in their career has had to face some form of adversity. Tonight, let me tell you about how I've overcome some adversity to achieve my lifelong dream. Upon leaving Barb as the 2006 state champion, I entered my freshman year at the University of Texas. Two weeks before the season, we were playing inter squad, and our left fielder had to go take the test. And our coach said, whoever made the last out of the inning before, go play left field. Well, I made the last out inning before, so I went out and played left fielder. I'm not a left fielder, but I went anyway. Me trying to act like Superman, they hit a fly ball to me, and I dive, and I land in an awkward position, and I tear my knee. I tear my PCL in my knee, and I'm out four to six weeks at the minute. I could have laid there and felt sorry for myself. I could have made excuses of, oh, this season's over. You know, I'm hurt. I'm going to be behind everybody. I'm not going to make it. I'm never going to play this year. Let's we'll start trying to get prepared for next year. But I didn't. I fought. And I fought my way into the starting lineup. I ended up hitting 400 through 30 games. And I was playing pretty good defensively. And after 30 games, I made my first fielding error. That very next inning, I come into the dugout. And head coach Augie Garrido looks at me and says, you know, you're done for the day. I said, okay, you know, thinking I'll get back out there another day. Well, I never saw the starting field. I never saw the field as a starting position player again for the rest of the season. I fought from a knee injury just to get onto the field, to becoming a freshman All-American, and it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to be the starting shortstop at the University of Texas. I could have said, you know, just not good enough. If I can't start at Texas, never going to be able to play anywhere else. I'm a good student. I could have went and got my degree and became a physical therapist just like my brother. But I didn't. That wasn't my goals. And that wasn't my dreams. So I kept fighting. And I didn't quit. Fast forward a couple years. My first year of Pro Bowl. It's the very first inning of the very first spring training in my professional career. A shallow fly ball is hit between me and the left fielder playing shortstop. And we both dive for the ball. He takes my feet out and I land on my shoulder and I completely separate my collarbone away from my shoulder. Once again, <coughs> more rehab. After three weeks of extensive rehab, I was on the training table for three to four hours a day. You know, stretching and trying to get some form of mobility in my shoulder it was still hurting. I was still in serious pain. But I knew that my dream was to play in the big leagues and I couldn't do it sitting on the sidewalk. So I, get, I went against the advice of my family, my friends, my peers, and I played anyway. I ended up not having a very good year, and I was bashed in the media. I was called a shortstop that couldn't hit, a shortstop that couldn't throw. How can this guy be a prospect? He can't hit or can't throw. He only has one tool. He can run. That's it. That's all he can do. I said, you're right. 
That's all I got. But I did. I kept fighting. I kept pushing towards my journey. I came home and got a great workout partner with my brother. And I uh, worked out harder than I'd ever worked out in my life. I got into the best physical shape that I could ever be in. That next year, I started off my season and I was playing good. I was hitting around 300, playing good defense. And then another freak accident happens. I go to catch a ground ball at the middle. I catch it and I spin and I plant to go throw to first base. And my foot slips and I tear my groin. Once again, more rehab. Six weeks of rehab before I could even step on the field. I'm in the training room every day, seven days a week, just trying to allow them to let me get on the field. Once I got back on the field, they tell me, you're going to play two days and you're going to sit one until you can get your body back in baseball shape, until you can get your legs and your arm and everything ready that it can play every day. Well, two weeks turned into three weeks. Three weeks turned into four weeks. Four weeks turned into six weeks. Six weeks later, I'm still sharing time with this guy that I feel like I'm out playing. So I call my agent and I tell him, we got to find out what's going on. we got to figure out what is the reasoning why I'm still sharing time. So we call the head of minor league development for the Brewers, and we're sitting there on a 3A phone call with him. And, I, and he says this, and it's something that I will never forget. Is he says, you know what, Josh? We as the Brewers do not think you're good enough to play in the big leagues. We don't believe that your ability, and we don't believe that your talent will ever take you to the major leagues. For the first time in my life, I was told I'm not going to be able to achieve my dream. I could have quit right there and said, you're right. But I didn't. Instead, I worked harder, and I worked harder to get to where I knew that I was going to be able to perform an ability that I knew was going to get me there. And that next season, I started out in double A, and I led the league in games played at 137. I had a great year, and after the season, I was rewarded to play at the most prestigious <coughs> prospect winter league there is in the Arizona Fall League. In that league, I hit 404, not 403. <laughs> I was first team all Arizona Fall League All-Star, and I was rewarded with making the 40-man roster, which was the biggest step towards achieving my dream. I went to big league camp, and I had a good big league camp, and on April 5th, my dream became reality. It was a moment that I will never forget. The manager calls me into his office, and he says, sit down. So I sit down, and he looks me in the eyes, and he says, congratulations, Josh. You're going to the big leagues. Finally, I can say I made it. For those of you thinking in this room, am I good enough to make it to the top in whatever I do? And for me, you are asking yourselves the wrong question. For me, the question is this. It's how bad do you want it, and how hard are you going to fight to get it? Because no matter how many obstacles are put in front of you, and no matter what adversity comes during that time, if you want it bad enough, and if you work hard enough, you will achieve. Thank you all for having me, and God bless.